back. This was uh, It's Because of People Like You by OB Best. Um, I'd like to cover a few topics with Tim now. Uh, we've really enjoyed the first segment of the show, uh, speaking with a couple of developers. I think that's the first time we speak with game developers in the show. Um, and there is an is interesting news that I found today, in fact, just a few hours ago, uh, about Microsoft... Uh, essentially paying the Linux Foundation, which is quite an important thing, I believe. That's the first time I've seen such a thing. Uh, there is a conference being organized with the Linux Foundation, and uh, I think it's uh, LinuxCon Europe, or just LinuxCon, and, and one of the sponsors, uh, with the kind contribution of, I think, $20,000, is Microsoft, but it comes with the condition, of course, that they have to uh, get an appearance. Uh, I think they, ha- they have a session on Hyper-V, basically promoting proprietary software and the usage of Windows on top of it. So, you know, you can use Linux and help pay some money to a company that's basically suing Linux. And, and it's a very interesting type of situation where they basically accepted the money as well. I haven't seen that particular article, but we may have something similar a few years ago where... There was a Microsoft had to, had to paid or contributed to a to a Linux convention or a conference type type event, and it never went ahead. Um, it just seems to me, when you were saying that, I thought you were going to bring up a subject from years. Ago. I'm sure we've had this before. They did um, Linux the tag in Germany. So, yeah, it's and it was, wasn't it cancelled? It I'm wasn't sure cancelled actually, oh, right. but but it's not really endorsed directly by the Linux Foundation, so. Uh, what's really disappointed to me personally is that they've fallen into a trap, which, you know, Microsoft itself described it as a trap before. Mm. Uh, if you consider, I'll, I'll give you an example. For example, Richard Stallman usually said, in a very kind, calm way, that the problem with these things is not that they accept the money, it's that the fact that there is a condition to promote proprietary software as part of the deal. And it's quite right about that. Uh, in this case... Uh, I think it's Sean, what's his name, Sean Michael Kerner, I think his name is. Uh, he basically talks about the amount of money and apparently the fact that they get a session out of it. So it's not a really a donation. It's it's just basically trying to get more influence in the conference and by influence in Linux. Uh, and I, mean, I, I won't... Yeah, okay. I, I was, I, was just gonna say, I, I don't so much have an issue with... Uh, if a company uh, wants to donate some money and have a little slot talking about proprietary software per se at a, a conference like this, that, that that's not my particular issue. But I'm, I'm very uncomfortable and very surprised and possibly even a little disappointed that somebody that's been from a company that's been so hostile towards Linux. Exactly. Uh, I mean, even in the, in the world of mobile phones, we have them fleecing a little bit of every yeah. sale of uh, Android it's phones. It's a big score like when they try to do... Uh, um, so. so really... The, they're not welcome on moral grounds, in my view, on the basis of that alone, um, mm-hmm. no matter what they're donating, um, because it's taken with one hand and given with another. But uh, I'm guaranteed the balance is well in their favour um, yeah. in terms of giving and taking. I think they made more than twenty thousand uh, mm-hmm. pounds on on their Android licences. Um, I'm actually preparing but, an article about it because I was going to point out that people, it's something I've been writing about at least twenty times before over the years. Uh, it's a lot to do with the way Microsoft build what it calls a bridge to Linux. I don't mean bridge in a good way, more like a bridge in the sense you want to, you know, help the Trojan horse cross the river. Uh, and that's Novell. So Novell has been a very major player in the Linux Foundation, both financially and uh, obviously it's Susan now. It's, there is no Novell. Novell was sold. Nothing happened with it. It's gone to waste. Uh, and by the way, the, the deal has just turned six. The, the deal between Microsoft and Novell has just turned six years old. And TechRights also is about six, six years old. But going to the, the, the main subject is once Microsoft signed a deal with Novell, they got a lot of access into the... Basically, Novell was like Linux department to Microsoft. And it was also a bit of a proxy uh, into the, the so-called enemy or competition uh, for Microsoft. So... In, in this case, Microsoft has been using Novell, first of all, to put this thing called Hyper-V inside Linux. If it wasn't for Novell, it probably wouldn't be there in the first place. Uh, the CTO, former CTO of the Linux Foundation, uh, 
uh, Rex Marcus, Marcus Rex, I'm not sure which one is the first name. Uh, he was from Novell. Novell was a big contributor. The Linux Foundation could never quite criticize Microsoft in quite the same way they could before the Microsoft Novell deal. So that caused a sense of self-censorship because some of their one of the main um, contributors to the Linux Foundation, the people who are paying the wage of Linus Torvalds and others, uh, were, you know, were basically in bed with Microsoft and marketing together with Microsoft. Now you've got Nokia as well. And you know Nokia has been run by former Microsofters, not just Stephen Elop. There is some more people who joined from Microsoft. Stephen is bringing the whole the old gang to to Nokia now, in the same way that Juniper, by the way, is doing it. So Juniper has been filled with like 12 Microsoft executives. And just about a week ago, it was pointed out that, you know, they, they've just released an anti, guess which platform, report. It's, it's Android. Basically, they're attacking Android now. And if you look at who's involved in the company, it's Microsoft, you know, Microsoft veterans. So anyway, Linux Foundation is filled with this kind of former semi... Um, semi um, conflict of interest Microsoft things inside of it so it's very hard for it to say no to Microsoft even though it's a known issue and I wanted to quote something that I, I pulled the exact quote from one of the Microsoft uh, chief evangelists at the time well, when he was quoted as saying in antitrust exhibit uh, he said I've killed at least two Mac conferences and then he carries on saying, by injecting Microsoft content um, into the conference, the conference got shut down. This, these are his words, okay? And then he says, uh, the guy who ran it said, uh, why am I doing this? So this is a person who was deliberately going into a Mac conference, trying to act all nice and trying to inject all kinds of things that would piss off the people in the conference. Obviously, people wouldn't sign up and attend the conference because back in the days, the Mac folks were uh, more hostile towards Microsoft than today. Actually, it's funny how you know Apple became very, uh, very much like a frenemy of Microsoft, and it seems to me like when it comes to patents, they are only friends, and when it comes to competing, they, you know, they they basically have a sort of. Um, uh, what's it called when two companies basically decide to 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 predefine the share of each company? Microsoft tried this with Netscape, and that's illegal. It's basically a situation where you say, you take this slice of the market, I'll take this slice, and we're not going to step on each other's toes, which is a sort of collusion, basically. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be competition. And Apple is aiming for a crowd that Microsoft isn't afraid of losing. For example, uh, certain schools certain people who cannot afford expensive computers, and Apple is not interested in reducing the price of the computers just to accommodate for you know poor people in places like Africa. Um, that's just not what Apple aims for. Apple wants cash, and it goes for the rich people and tries to sell them premium things. So those two companies are not so much in conflict from that point of view. And uh, when it comes to Linux, it's a completely, it's not a war of brands. It's not really the brand of, you know, the Penguin versus, you know, this uh, window thingy, twirly thing that kind of looks like a flag now. Actually, when it looks, uh, when you look at Windows 8, it looks more like a trash, like a bean kind of spun 90 degrees to the left. Um, but when it comes to Linux, it's a whole new way. It's a whole new paradigm for Microsoft to compete against. The free operating system doesn't cost any money. Any OEM can, you know, distribute that type of thing. And uh, it doesn't like, it's not compatible with patents, and Microsoft doesn't know how to deal with that. So, and and here you have a conference founded, funded by lots of different companies that are sharing an interest in an operating system or a platform, a kernel, and Microsoft comes there because it wants to use this kernel to run a different operating system, basically a Trojan horse, and that's Windows. It's Hyper-V. Um, and yeah, and it's a bit of a sellout, a huge disappointment for me, anyway. Yeah, it's uh, like I say, yeah, it, it's.